some digging and found empty pill bottles and many empty beer cans in his car, Rebecca said. The wife found out that her husband had been hiding a grave substance abuse in the same car he drives their children to school in. Rebecca's shock didn't stop at the pills and bottles she found. As she decided to further search the car for, she found something even more horrifying. The car trunk was full of several years of mail, all of which were addressed to her. Her own husband had been keeping letters from her for the past years, birthday cards to bills and personal letters. Rebecca couldn't wrap her head around it. She has been living with someone who conducted a whole separate life away from her, someone who was trying to isolate her even from her own life. Confused, hurt, and angry were my only emotions for the next few days. I was running on fumes and couldn't eat or sleep. I felt so stupid for not seeing the signs. I had been so busy with raising a child and building my practice at work. I was married to a drug addict, confessed Rebecca, and this was only the tip of the iceberg, more was to be revealed. There was more to the story, as if addiction, stealing, and the infinite lying weren't enough already. Rebecca had to find more heart-wrecking truths. With tears in her eyes, she said, he had been lying to me for years, and my credit was unfortunately ruined because of it. I had no idea how easy it was to open credit cards and take out personal loans in your spouse's name. I thought I had stayed on top of my bills, but had no idea he was secretly hiding things from me over the course of our seven-year marriage. She found out that her husband was lying about everything in his life. He lied about being in the Marine Corps. He lied about his education and his job. I had been living nothing but lies for almost a decade of my life. Rebecca was devastated. She had been married to someone she knew nothing about for the past seven years, someone she shared a child with. The most devastating truth Rebecca came to find out was that her husband had been married to another woman. And not just that, he even had another daughter. He had been leading a completely different life, one she knew nothing about. Devastated and hurt, she said, I thought to myself, how could life be so cruel? How could I be so dumb? When Rebecca decided to confront her fraud husband, he abandoned her and their daughter without giving any clarification. Rebecca and her daughter had been left alone, alone to deal with the wrecking ball that turned their lives upside down. Rebecca had no husband anymore, and her daughter was now without a father. After Rebecca realized that she and daughter were completely on their own, she had to come back to her senses and take control over things. She rented a hotel room and went shopping for life essentials, enough to sustain them until she figured things out. She had to act, and she had to act fast. Rebecca was struggling to hide her pain and keep a happy face for the sake of her little girl, my daughter, and I tried to make the best of our vacation, as I called it, while I cried over the things we had lost, wondering how in the world I would sort through this mess. My sweet baby girl lost everything, and we had no support there. After much thought, Rebecca finally accepted the fact that she had no other choice than to go back to her parents' house. She was heartbroken that at the age of 32, she would have to go back and live in her childhood bedroom with her daughter. Rebecca told, I left the beach and moved back to crummy old Tennessee. To make things worse, it was snowing when we moved back. It was March and snowing in Tennessee. How could this situation get any worse? After silently crying for countless nights, blaming herself for not knowing sooner, for not being able to do better for her daughter, Rebecca finally decided to move on and build her life back up. She put herself together and started working to pay off the debts that her fraud husband had left on her name. While Rebecca was happy that her daughter was getting to spend quality time with her grandparents, she herself felt a little lonely and thought of catching up with her old friends in town. And this decision of hers will change her life forever. Rebecca recalls, I desperately needed to find some friends. I finally texted an old guy friend from high school. I jokingly asked if he knew any hot single dads. This wasn't even relevant in our conversation, just a random thought that popped in my head. To my surprise, he said yes and immediately gave me a name. Rebecca decided to search for the man whose name was Steven on Facebook and said, my Facebook detective brain got to work. This single dad had a daughter who seemed to be the same age as mine. Rebecca showed her mother pictures of Stephen, and suddenly her mother shouted in excitement, I know that little girl, when she saw the pictures of Stephen's daughter. It turned out that her mother's hairdresser 
was the sister of Stephen's ex-wives. Rebecca's mom insisted that she should go and meet Stephen. A new chapter must start and the guy seemed to be a decent man who could bring joy to her life. Rebecca was still having some trust issues, considering the trauma she's been through because of her ex-husband, but she decided to give it a shot anyway. Rebecca had already found Stephen's account on Facebook, so she decided to just text him there. Stephen replied to her text right away, and that's where everything started. They would talk non-stop via text and phone calls. After several days of virtual interaction only, they finally decided to meet face to face. Even though Rebecca was already married once and had many first dates before, she still felt nervous about her first time meeting Stephen. The day finally arrived and the two single parents finally got to meet each other. Rebecca recalled, I had the biggest grin all day and I was smitten. I could not stop thinking about him. But Rebecca did not want to keep herself in a fake light and make herself happy. After all, I was just damaged goods. With my awful credit and all the baggage I had, surely this guy would just move on, and there was no reason to get my hopes up, she said. Stephen was equally smitten by Rebecca as was she by him. Their relationship slowly developed into something else, as they both started to secretly love each other. Rebecca was scared to say anything. She had no intentions of scaring Stephen away from her life, especially now that she finally has something to brighten her days. Stephen was well aware of the traumatic experience Rebecca went through, and to help her through it, he did all that he could. He showed her his bank statements, credit scores, up-to-date mortgage payments, and all that was required to help Rebecca regain the trust. She had to know he wasn't just another fraud. Rebecca was glad she had him and said, I was slowly letting him into my heart and he was helping me rebuild piece by piece. I certainly didn't need to be saved by anyone, but he swooped in and saved me. Rebecca and Stephen spent as much time together as they could. They were an inseparable match. Even their daughters became best friends and wanted to spend all their time side by side. Things were becoming better. Rebecca's life was going to change for good soon enough. Stephen went down on his knees and proposed to Rebecca. He wanted her to be his forever. Rebecca wanted the same thing too. She was finally back home, and she was there to stay. In a small and intimate ceremony on the 15th of August, the two lovers said yes to each other and blended their families to form one complete, happy, loving family. The couple was aware that people would question their relationship if they were to know the details. Rebecca says, People are always curious to hear our story, so we just look at each other and smile. Usually, our story goes, we met on a blind date and got married four months later. In the end, love wins. Three years after their wedding, they welcomed a new member to their family. A beautiful baby girl joined the team of princesses. Both Rebecca and Stephen are still fighting for the custody of their daughters. Even when the fight gets intense and draining, they support each other willing to win their battles together.